goodness me, Claire, follow that. <laughs> I'm afraid somebody has to. <laughs> and it's a pleasure indeed to introduce Carol Jagger, who's a professor of epidemiology of aging at Newcastle University. So we've got another culture represented here from the north. And uh, we look forward very much to hearing Carol, who's going to be talking about aging, comorbidity, but also about care. Thank you, Carol. So I hope I'm going to be sort of in between, even though I'm a statistician by background, I hope I'm going to be in between, and I'm not going to forget um, the people, because I've got um, three important messages I want to, to get over about ageing, comorbidity, and care. So I'll apologise, first of all, because I know you all know populations are ageing, and I'm sure you're all very aware of the House of Lords report, um, uh, that, that happened uh, last year. But I put this slide up because um, the biggest increase um, in uh, the numbers of older people are due to the more than doubling of the those aged 85 and over. It's this section of the population which is growing um, the most rapidly. And this has tremendous implications um, for dementia, but for, for other conditions too. Um, and uh, my part in MoDev is to is to produce a micro simulation model, um, in a sense, to forecast the future. And and this is just to remind me that prediction is very difficult, and so we've not got an easy job on. <laughs> so why is the population age 85 and over so important? Well, of course, because we know that the prevalence of dementia approximately doubles every five year increase in age. Um, and, and we've known this from a, a, a meta-analysis um, uh, of the European uh, dementia studies back in, in 2000. So it's this um, population up here, it's these people up here um, who have got the highest prevalence of dementia. And, and I think I'm safe to say that dementia is unlike uh, although there are other age-related conditions, um, they don't increase with age quite as, as sharply as dementia does. Um, and the Ready for Aging report um, said that there would be an increase of 80% of in the number of older people with dementia between 2010 and 2030. Um, but Subi um, uh, has already said there is uh, good news in that the Cognitive Function and Ageing study um, last year published uh, the results of the first real-time uh, trend uh, comparison, a uh, proper comparison of, of exactly the same design study, um, almost 20 years apart, and showed that the prevalence of dementia had decreased by around 1.8%. Um, what this means is that um, there are around 200,000 fewer people aged 65 and over with dementia than would have been expected from the 1991 figures. So that's quite um, a big reduction. But that doesn't mean that the numbers aren't going to carry on increasing because of the relentless um, increase in life expectancy that, that we're seeing and which shows no signs of decreasing. <coughs> And what does this mean um, for care? Well, we've been um, doing some work in Newcastle with a cohort of 85-year-olds. Um, there's uh, 854 in our study. They were all born in 1921. Um, and we've been putting together um, the sort of general measures of, of disability, activities of daily living, and cognitive impairment to classify people into the amount of care they need in terms of time. Um, and 8% of our population required 24-hour care. So they had severe dementia, or they couldn't get out of a chair on their own, or they couldn't get to and from the toilet without help. 12% required help at regular times daily. So they needed to um, uh, be got up or put to bed, or um, they needed meals cooking for them or they needed help with medication. And then 39% had what was termed long interval need, help less than daily. So typically help with um, shopping or laundry. What this means is 
um, that in fact if the prevalence remains the same, um, it doesn't look too um, exciting um, for the critical uh, interval need, the ones who require 24 hour care. But in fact, if the prevalence remained the same, then there would be an increase of 79% in the numbers requiring um, critical interval need over uh, the next 20 years. And that amounts, again, to about 200,000 people, funnily enough. But what about the people who care for these that have that require care 24 hours a day or at regular times every day. In fact, for the critical interval need, 75% of them were in care homes. But when you look at who the main carers are, the main carers are children, generally. So then I thought, who are these children? These are 85-year-olds, born in 1921. If you look at age at first birth, which has remained relatively constant um, over the period that they would be having um, their children and will still remain at, at round about that. And if you back of the envelope calculation, these children are late 50s, early 60s. There's a predominance of women. Quite a lot of them work full time. And we know from a recent ONS report on carers from the census that if you're caring more than 50 hours a week and you're working full time, you're almost three times more likely to report poor health. So these carers are the ones that we're asking to work longer, particularly the women. So that's a, a thing we, we may just need to keep in mind because this has societal and family um, um, impact as well. The third point I want to make is about comorbidity. That in fact, people aged 85 uh, and over don't have just one disease. And this is old data from uh, the Cognitive Function and Aging Study, and you can see how much um, the comorbidity increases with age. But if you look at our 85-year-olds, in fact, this graph, and it'll be hard to see um, at the back, is the is a disease count. And the disease count starts at what? Because none of our 85-year-olds had no disease. Okay? The median number was four for men and five for women, and about 30% had six or more conditions. Okay, this has huge implications for GPs who ask you to go with one problem. I'm not sure how that works. Um, but it also has huge implications for our study too. Because we need to take into account those multiple diseases for the care needs. Because the care packages will depend on what else they have. And those key diseases are also going to increase because they're all age-related diseases. So unlike Subi being very optimistic, I am quite an optimistic person. I always end up feeling a little pessimistic by this um, point. Uh, but in summary, <coughs> we know the numbers of the very old will continue to increase because life expectancy shows no signs of slowing down. It's increasing by two years every decade, and it hasn't slowed down yet. And it hasn't in the longer-lived countries either. Multiple diseases are the norm for the very old. Okay. No longer um, are we seeing people with just one condition as our health service was set up for. Okay. Um, as you know, outpatient appointments is by specialty. If you've got more than one condition, you go to a lot of specialties. We have to change that. The care packages that we're going to be um, uh, trying to develop um, and cost in MODEM are going to need to take into account those comorbidities. The main care is the very old are children, and that has huge implications for extending working life, um, and it's 
have cost for family um, and for society as we go each year. Um, and a point that I haven't made in the previous slides, but, but one that I think we need to keep an eye on, is that our ethnic minorities in, in our uh, UK population are a young population, but they are getting into our older population in increasing <coughs> numbers. And we know very little about them because they haven't been part of the big study. They're not in any great numbers in ELSA. They haven't been in, in great numbers in the Cognitive Function and Aging Study. They weren't in great numbers in our 85 plus study because, there, again, there aren't that many of them in Newcastle. We need to, to know a bit more about the ethnic minorities who are aging and their needs too. Thank you.